Good afternoon, learners. Um, we are continuing with our lesson. Uh, we started with the overview of the paper for Technical Sciences Paper 2. So we're looking at the structure of the paper, which is structure um, section A and section B, which is structured questions. So we have dealt with question number one, the multiple choice questions, section A, 10 marks. So now we're looking at structured questions from question number two. As I have indicated earlier on that um, I'm having two question number two. The first one is extracted from September 2022, and the second one is extracted from June 2024. So for um, September 2022 content, which is this this one. So this one is 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 extracted from September 2022 from Houghton Province. So we try to answer this question, but I want to emphasize something. So in this question, we have two definitions, the functional group and also the unsaturated hydrocarbon. I just want to, to emphasize that as you are preparing for your final examination, you must have this. This is your Bible. If you are going to church, I will tell you this is your Bible. This is the examination guidelines. We take definitions as they are from the examination guidelines. So when we are, uh, when we are marking uh, the, the definitions, the definitions are allocated two marks. So each definition is two marks. So when we are marking those definitions, we are looking for the keywords. So you have to make sure you cannot define a hydrocarbon without mentioning that Hydrocarbons are organic compounds that consist of hydrogen and carbon atoms only. So the only is only for the hydrocarbons. I want to emphasize this because last year, the definition, the very first definition in question number two was organic molecule. And most learners define organic molecules as molecules containing carbon atoms only, of which the only is emphasized only in hydrocarbons. The word hydrocarbons is hydro from hydrogen and carbon from carbon atoms. So that's why when we are defending a hydrocarbon is organic compounds with that, that consists of hydrogen and carbon atoms only at the end. So I wanted to emphasize this in this question. And also as I have indicated that as you are preparing for question number two, you must know the definition of organic molecules from there, the four formulae, the four formulae are as follows. You must know the molecular formula, the, the structural formula, condensed structural formula, and also the general formula. And then you must also know that for each homologous series, there is a specific general formula. In the previous question papers, we, we, were, asked, we were asked the following general formula. General formula of an uh, alkane, the general formula of an alkene, and the general formula of an alkyne. Then last year, we had a general formula for an alcohol, even, the, even June this year. So you need to know, and I will show you how to master the general formula for, for each homologous series. So as we are looking here, we, we answered number one and 2.2 earlier on. So now we are looking at 2.3. Now 2.3 from the list above, choose a substance that is used in the laboratory for the preparation of compound E. So you are looking at compound E. How do you identify compound E? I, compound E is a structural formula, so you will identify that by the functional group. So the functional group of this is carbon, nyl group da, bonded to oxygen, bonded to carbon, bonded to a carbon, okay? Which is an ester, all right? So for, for this, I normally say to learners, surround this oxygen, right? So when you surround this oxygen, you will look for this part that has the carbonyl group and then this part, right? Which is an alkyl group. So you must know that the alkyl group comes from the alcohol and this comes from the carboxylic acid. So when you are giving the IUPAC name of an ester, the IUPAC name of an ester will consist of two parts. The first part of that IUPAC name is derived from the alcohol, and the second part is derived from the carboxylic acid. In this case, this IUPAC name is easy because you are given two 
um, carbon atoms from the alcohol and two carbon atoms from the carboxylic acid. So the name of this will be ethyl, ethanoate, ethyl, ethanoate. So give the name or formula of the catalyst that is needed for the reaction referred to in question 2.3. So in this, it's going to be a sulfuric acid. I also want to emphasize that in this case, you are given an option. You can write a name or a formula. So you can say it's H2SO4 or sulfuric acid. But if the question is specific to say name, you simply write sulfuric acid. If the question is specific to say formula, you only stick to H2SO4. Write down the structural formula of the isomer. So we'll talk about the isomers in the, in the next slide. So in this, I wanted to emphasize one, the, the definitions that you take definitions from the examination guidelines. And also, I wanted also to emphasize the unsaturated hydrocarbon. That unsaturated hydrocarbon are compounds with one or multiple bonds between carbon atoms in their hydrocarbon chain. Between, between, don't, don't, don't leave between, between um, the carbon atoms in their hydro. Carbons. So for an unsaturated is a compound with one or two multiple bonds between, between. So I wanted to emphasize that. And also the, the isomers that when it comes to isomers, you must know the definition of a structural isomer. What is the definition of a structural isomer? Isomers are organic um, compounds with the same what? Molecular formula, but different structural formula. Then we have three types of isomers. We have a functional isomer, we have a positional isomer, we have um, an positional, functional, and also the chain isomer. So if you are looking at A, for example, for A, you will have a chain isomer. So the first thing is easy, you are given a molecular formula, C for H8. So now you're gonna draw different structures, but these structures, when you are counting the number of carbon atoms, it should be four, the number of hydrogen atoms, it should be eight. And then 2.8, identify an unsaturated hydrocarbon from the table above, write down only the letter of the correct answer. For this one, we know that there are two types of hydrocarbon, there is a saturated and unsaturated. So for the saturated, it's an alkane with a single bone, and unsaturated is a double bond and a triple bond. And then in this case, it's not just any hydrocarbon, but it's an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So now you look at B and A, both of them are hydrocarbons, but B is the saturated hydrocarbon and A is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. That's why it is very important for you to first look at the table and analyze the table because that will assist you in answering questions. Let's try and look at question number two um, for, from June 2024. So now even in this one, we identify all the homologous series, but what I want to emphasize in this question is question 2.31 and 2.32. But again, let us look at hydrocarbon. Define a hydrocarbon. What is a hydrocarbon? A hydrocarbon, as I indicated earlier on, is from this is hydrogen and a carbon. So is organic compounds that consist of hydrogen and carbon atoms only. You don't leave the only when you're defining a hydrocarbon. Write down the letters that represent two unsaturated uh, hydrocarbons. Same applies to the question in the um, previous slide. The question in the previous slide was saying identify an unsaturated hydrocarbon and we identify that as A, which is C4H8, which is an alkene. Now let us look at this one. So even in this, the C5, sorry, the C3H6. So for an alkene, it's very easy. It's CNH2N. So you double the number. Once you double the number, C3 times 2, 6, you know it's an alkene. Now, write down the letters that represent two unsaturated. So I said for a hydrocarbon, 
hydrocarbons are divided into two, saturated and un. So unsaturated will be alkene and alkyne, but for saturated is an alkane. So the question here says two unsaturated. So we are looking for alkene, alkene, or alkene, alkyne. So A is an alkene, alkyne, and um, F is an um, alkene. So the two letters will be A and F. Write down the general formula of the, co of the following compound. So I need to erase this because I want to emphasize this. So for each homologous series, there is a specific general formula, all right? So now, the general formula of alkene is CnH2n. So I normally say to learners, use CnH2n as your foundation for all the eight general formulas because this will be the ninth one. So from here, you move to CnH2n. You still have CnH2n, but now you're going to add what? Plus two because it's an alkene. So you're going to have... Let's go back, sorry, and then we have CnH2n minus 2 for CnH2n still, CnH2n, I'm going to write this up to 9 times, CnH2n, 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 CnH2n. H2N. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and CN, sorry, CNH2N. C, CNH2N. So CNH2N. So now for an alkane CT plus 2, we say plus 2, and then for alkene. CNH2N minus 2. Alkene, CNH2N. Alkane plus 2. Alkyne minus 2. Now we are left with alcohol and um, haloalkane. So alkane, alcohol is going to be plus 1. Haloalkane is going to be plus 1. But for an alcohol, you have plus 1 and OH. For al haloalkane, you have this into X, and that X stands for chlorine, bromine, iodine, and the fluorine. So now, you have now the four homologous series, which has something in common, and that is a carbon double bonded to oxygen, right? But for the ketone and, and L, ketone and aldehyde, you only have one oxygen. So it's going to be CNH2NO, CNH2NO. So the, home, the, the general formula for alkane, for aldehyde and the ketone is the same, is CNH2NO. Then the general formula for an ester and the carboxylic acid, because both of them, they have two oxygen atoms, is going to be CNH2NO2, CNH2NO2. So you must know this. So let's come and answer the question. Write down the general formula of the following compounds. Compound B. Compound B is a carboxylic acid. So we know now the general formula is going to be CNH2NO2. General formula of an ester, if we're given an ester, will be the same as this one. So for, for F, the general formula for F, for me, if it's an alkene, then everyone will know because this is your foundation. This is your base on building up the general formula. So it's going to be CNH2N as indicated there. Write down the IUPAC names of the following compounds, C and D. So for C, look at C, okay, carbon double bonded to oxygen and then oxygen. So what do we do? We surround that oxygen. Then we have what? Then we have this and that. So this from an alcohol and that from a carboxylic acid. How many oxygen? One. How many oxygen? Two. So the name of the ester consists of two parts. First part derived from the alcohol, and the second part is derived from the carboxylic acid. So in this case, we're going to have methyl ether noate. So the name will be methyl 
missile because there's one missile isa no wait that's the name of um, organic compound uh, c then for d d is c5 h12 which is how many carbon atoms there are five carbon atoms and then when you look at this one you can see now that d belongs to n alkane is c5 2 times 5 10 plus 2 which is 12 so there are five carbon atoms therefore this will be a pentane this will be a pentane so this is a pentane so c and d c is methylethanoate and d is a pentane okay so now we are looking at question number three which is physical properties so for physical properties you must know the following one you must know three physical properties the definition the definition of a boiling point the definition of a melting point and also the definition of the vapor pressure so the definition of the boiling point will be the temperature the definition of the boiling point will be the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a substance equals to atmospheric pressure and in this most learners instead of saying the temperature they say the point so immediately you you write the point so you will get zero for definition is 200 right so now when you're defining a boiling point the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a substance equals to atmospheric pressure the temperature at which the solid and liquid phase of a substance are, equi uh, are at equilibrium that it will be the definition of the um, melting point and then the definition of the vapor pressure the pressure exerted by a vapor at equilibrium with its liquid in a closed system that is the definition of the vapor pressure so we have defined the the the, the boiling point and then how do you answer questions when it comes to this the easiest way is to first look at the table right and then in that table identify the dependent and independent if you are given a table second thing is to look at the homologous series the first question must be in your mind are you given the same 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 homologous series or different so a and b same homologous series alkane c oh, sorry a to c same homologous series alkane but c is branched a and b are straight chain but d is a different homologous series how do you answer questions if you are given the same homologous series if you are given the same homologous series you talk about the chain length you talk about the strength of the intermolecular forces and the energy that is needed but if you are given let's say you are comparing c to d c is a different homologous series alkane to, to d which is an alcohol so when you're answering questions you answer questions in bullet forms so the very first thing you will talk about if you were answering c and d will be mentioning the type of intermolecular forces in c which will be london whereas d has hydrogen bond then talk about the strength of intermolecular forces and the energy that is needed depending on how the question is asked between a and b which has the higher vapor pressure that is very easy when the question is asked of a vapor pressure and you are given a boiling point you go to the table you check the one with a low boiling point the one with a low boiling point will have the highest vapor pressure so today i wanted to emphasize how to answer questions in the organic chemistry you can even go to the organic reaction so in the last um uh, lesson we will have we'll be looking at question number three and question number four how to analyze the flow diagram in question number four if you are given this let's say from butane to butane and then from butene to haloalkane from butene to alcohol and then you must know all the organic reactions i wish you all the best as you are preparing for your examination on the 11th 